today on Divorce Court. I'm here because I'm ready to file for a divorce. I feel like my husband has allowed his music career to take precedence while he sits back and allows me to take care of him and our daughter. My biggest issue with Anais is that it's the communication. I believe she needs to know how to express herself because I ain't no mind reader. I can't read mine, so I just need her to just be clear and give it to me raw. I want the judge to tell Chaz that I'm at my breaking point. I need him to step up more financially and mentally in our marriage or I will move forward with filing for divorce. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Anise Bernie and Chaz Bernie. Mr. and Mrs. Bernie, you have been married for four years, together for five. You have one child together, but here you are here to end your marriage. Mrs. Bernie, why don't you tell me why this marriage is coming to an end? Um, Your Honor, I feel that Chaz and I are no longer able to communicate. There's no respect left in our marriage. I've been unhappy for the past two years, and I'm really seeking your advice on what to do next. Give me an example, or tell me what it is about Mr. Bernie that's causing you to want to leave. I don't feel like he takes me seriously. Um, like I said, because there is no communication in our marriage left, if I say something, it automatically turns into what I've done wrong versus him owning up to what I need. From Can you give me an example of that? Example. Financially, I feel like mm -hmm. he hasn't really done his part. Um, I feel like emotionally, he has not been supportive to my needs. Mentally, uh, I'm going crazy. I don't respect my husband. That's not normal in a marriage. Okay. Tell me about his financial contributions and why you don't think they're sufficient. Well, I will say my husband, he's a rapper. Um, I think that he feels the long term or in the future, the money that's supposed to come in from his career is going to take care of our right now bills. Mm -hmm. And right now, our bills are amounting to more than what the graphics and videos and whatnot are bringing in. Tell me how he doesn't support you emotionally and why you say his rap persona is interfering with your marriage. He has a song called Bad B. Um, provocative. He raps about all the different women, nationalities, mm -hmm. personalities, body types that he's been with. This be that be. Now, and then not that I like that then... stuff. Right. But not that I like that stuff. And I, I, I'm, I'm all about not liking misogyny in music. I'll mm -hmm. say that. That's but right. how was that brought home? If he comes home and calls me a bee, she this act like Mr. I'm Mr. Bernie, the chicks. is that something you do? It, that's one song. When I go to a club, I might not go to a club where it's just those type of people. When you have, to, when you have a certain type of a genre of music that you putting out there, you have to cater to that crowd. I'm not gonna go to a college summit rapping about a bad beat. If I'm in a trap club, a club that got trap people, I'm gonna rap trap type of music. If I go to a college summit, I'm gonna rap some good, clean music for that crowd. But when you working in my type of career, you have to be able to actually have the music that they, those type of people want to see. Yeah, and, and I got that. And I'm Versatile. Right there with That's I, versatility. That's I, all it I is. I understand that, Mr. Bernie, and I'm not mad at you about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, because I understand you have to, you have to do what the, the audience does. But exactly. But can I just put that this out here in the atmosphere? that those people in the trap club are the least able to economically, socially, and emotionally defend themselves, and to the extent the, that you denigrate the women on a constant basis, you are cementing their impoverishment, both emotionally and financially. I will just say that. I understand and we'll, what and you're we'll saying. Move for, we'll move forward. Okay. okay now, I Mrs. Bernie, so far, you said how you felt, mm -hmm. but you haven't shown me one example of Mr. Bernie doing something that would cause you to feel that way. Why don't okay. you well, let's share back that up. with me? We, and we were together maybe two months, three months before I said, let's get married. He said, okay. So let's go... Moving. You were together for two months before you asked him to marry you? <laughs> well, it, was, it wasn't more so if I asked him to marry me. It was more of a situation. We went to Florida. We got together. My grandmother passed away. It kind of he was my rock during that time. So when I got back from burying my grandmother, we went to Florida. I needed to clear my head. While we're there, the whole time, he's on the phone with women. Oh, I'm here for this show. I'm here for that show. I'm doing How this. How you gonna get I'm mad, though? You only knew <laughs> no, no, no. for a month. E e either way. I'm here for this. I'm here for that. And I got ready to leave him. I got ready to leave him right there in Florida with all the women that he was communicating with. I was ready to go. So he made all these promises. Oh, I want to be with you. I love you. This, that, and the other. I said, okay, well, let's get married. He's like, okay. 
How much <laughs> sense does that make? I she was just, she was just leaping. It was a leap. I think it was just, does that make? I just wanted to see exactly where his head was at that point. And no, so, you didn't want to see did. where his head was. No, you wanted a ring. Because if you wanted to see where his head was, if he said yes, and then you would gone down there, turn right around, it's too early. Uh, it uh, is too early. But at that point, Your Honor, I was still married. So it was more so I just wanted to see where his oh. head was. You were still married to your... I was still to... legally married to my ex-husband at that time. Now, see, she ain't let me know nothing about that judge like till later on that, hey, I'm going through a divorce, and then I was like... It wasn't, it was way before Damn, that time. like, well, that. why didn't you tell you me? You didn't like, let him know up front that you knew. were still running married? Running the game, running the game, right? Running the game, right? Yeah, it was, no, he Look, knew, he knew. She talking to me knew. about I'm running the finesse, and I'm really giving he finesse. Knew. Your Honor, he knew, Chaz knew from the beginning what the situation was with my ex-husband. I had daughters. He met my oh, daughters before man. we even went to... How long did you know him before you went to Florida with him or wherever you went? We were... It was about three months, four months or so. And you just go off with somebody after three months? Yeah, we did. 90 we went... days! Oh, it's not because you bad. It's because <laughs> no. she's ridiculous. That's all. No, I'm I'm just, I, no, I I'm did just my part. To clear you know what that up right. No, I ain't bragging like that, but because you see where we at now. Like, yeah. she knew that, you know, my reputation, I, it was no woman that could calm me down. Like, I never thought I would meet that type of woman, but she really did change my life for the better, I feel, because I was out there running crazy. I was out there like, like a chicken with his head cut off. I, I was like, man, ain't no woman gonna be able to calm me down, but... Sure enough, God put her there, you know what I'm saying? And it actually made me change my perspective on how I look at life, period, as a whole. Okay. So. Well, speaking of that, I wanted... And, and that was a beautiful sentiment. And I want to talk to you about your future, your life, your right. career, and what you want to happen between the two of you. I done grabbed her phone a couple times just to put it on the charger, like, doo-doo, doo. -doo, -doo. What? Oh! Honest. Who is we this? So I'm looking like, hey, baby, how you been? What the... I'm like, whoa, whoa, like, this ain't your baby. This is my baby. Now, so Ms. Like, Ms. Ms. Bernie, are, are, are you doing or saying inappropriate things on your telephone with other people? Now, Mr. Bernie, given that you're 35 and your dream is to be a rapper, are you a little concerned? Am I a little concerned with what? Are you making progress? Yes, ma'am. I've been on tour with Rick Ross, DJ Khaled, Grand Hustle, T.I. Like, I can go on, but I'm gonna stop it right there. But I've been working. I've been putting in my work, putting in the grind. She know how hard I work. What so, do you, you know... think the problem is in your relationship? Then? Well, my baby ain't no angel either now. You know what I'm saying? I done grabbed her phone a couple times just to put it on the charger. Like, doo doo doo. What? Oh! Who is we, this? But we now I'm looking over. at the phone. Hold on, baby. Let me, let me, we, let me get we, my sentence out. Hang on, hang on. H hang on, sexy. So I'm, I'm pulling out, I'm about to pull plug my baby phone up. So I'm looking like, hey, baby, how you been? What the? I'm like, whoa, whoa, like, this ain't your baby. This my baby. I'm looking at, like... <laughs> but, you know, I'm not saying that, so I'm saying I go pu push the thing. Oh, it's blue circles, white circles, blue circles. So that means it's been communication going right. on. Right. Okay, so it's a problem with my communication, but if I look at your phone, your communication going well with some other friends. Now, so Ms. Like, Ms. Ms. Bernie, are, are, are you doing or saying inappropriate things on your telephone with other people? There is a guy that has oh. been... No, no, this has been a friend, a business partner, no one I've ever slept with, no one I've ever had that type of mm -hmm. intimate relationship with. This is someone that started out as a business partner, mm -hmm. grew into a friend that was is there. He, is he next up? I don't want to be with anybody. I need some time to get myself together, Your Honor. I've changed completely who I am as a person. I don't trust mm -hmm. the way that I used to. I don't love the way I used to. I don't communicate the way I used to. There were several reasons why I should have left. Share them there, with okay. me. Number one, we're engaged. We go to Atlanta. We go to Atlanta. Again, at this time, I was traveling. I like to get away. Never hated staying home. I said, hey, I'm going to Atlanta, you know, just to get away. He wanted to go. Okay, cool, we go. He said, hey, babe, I'm gonna go see my best friend, you know, one of my guy friends. He lives up here in Atlanta. I'm gonna go spend time with him. We're gonna go out to the club. Do you wanna go? No, I don't wanna go. I stay back at the hotel. He goes, hour, two hours, whatever it is, comes back. Everything's cool. He wanna, you know, be all on me. We make love. He get in the shower. Next thing I know, his phone is going off from a chick saying, oh, it was so good seeing you. It was nice to see you. He, so he left me in a hotel room. While he went while off. While he and... went off to go be with Mr. Mr. Bernie, you can't explain <clears throat> that one? 
Now, that conversation could have went a whole different way. Now, if I wanted to lie about the situation, Judge, could, wouldn't it be easy for me to say, Babe, she said it was good seeing me. She seen me on Facebook. No. I could have lied and said that, but I did tell her the truth. I said, you know what? I'm, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't go and see my partner that I said I was going to see. I saw see. her. I saw her. But, you know, I'm such of a good guy. Like, for real, for real, the devil was on one shoulder and the angels was on another shoulder. The devil was like, man, get in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I ain't going to lie. My angel, the angel... Overrode the but devil. But listen, the angel was like, if you go in that house, you ain't gonna have no lady. So you didn't go? You. My right hand to God on my brother's grave, I didn't even go inside the house. I, I got you, I got you, I understand. I found out that I was pregnant. Um, his first child, I was high risk from the beginning. I had a history, I guess, of preterm um, mm -hmm. labor. So I continued to work despite the doctor's orders and I ended up going into premature, um, premature labor at five months. If he was providing like he was supposed to be, I would not have had to keep going to work. Do you believe Chaz and Anais have been faithful to each other? Tell us what you think at Facebook.com slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at DivorceCourt.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Divorce Court. Tell me what happened when, when your child was born prematurely and why you felt unsupported. Okay. Again, send me just a little bit back from Atlanta. I called the engagement off, went back to Augusta. We were not going to be together. A couple weeks later, I found out that I was pregnant. Um, his first child, I was, again, still not wanting to be with him, contemplating not having the baby, but I did. Um, I was high risk from the beginning. I had a history, I guess, of preterm um, mm -hmm. labor, had two mm -hmm. other daughters. So... During, the, um, during that time, I was supposed to have been on bed rest, but financially, I had to continue to take care of us. So I continued to work despite the doctor's orders, and I ended up going into premature, um, premature labor at five months. They told us our daughter was not going to make it. If she did, she would be blind, she would be deaf. Um, and that's how she always is, Judge. Hey, she ain't want to listen. Let her, let her finish, and then, I will, okay. and then I'll go to you. It's okay. not even about me not listening. If he was providing like he was supposed to be, I would not have had to keep I was always work. there for her. I'm always there for her. I guess it was probably times that she felt like I could have been more instrumental as far as being that shoulder for her, but those were times that she was being, like, extra nagging and extra aggravating. And, like, I'm the type of person, like, I don't always, like, sometimes I get with your aggravation, I'll go ahead and match you, and we could just go ahead and go at it. But th at that time, with my daughter, you know, going through that, I'm, this is my first time being a father, so I'm, mm -hmm. like, already not all the way, like, feeling like, why is my daughter still in the hospital? I can't even bring her t home, you know what I'm saying? So I was actually going through some things, too, Dude, so it's let, like... Let me ask you this. She claims that she was forced to continue to work even during a high... Ter I, was I, was, I was getting to I'm that. not finished. High-risk pregnancy that really uh, obligated her to stay in bed. Why don't you address that? Okay, what I was actually doing at that time, I was working when I was at her mother's house. I was going back and forth, driving by myself, back and forth to Atlanta to pick up merchandise. I have a merchandising company, too. And I was back and forth. I had watches. I had CV CDs, DVDs. And I was out there going in. Like, I'm coming in, working. I'm giving her money or whatever, where the money went. I don't know. She told me there was a certain amount that she was going to be giving to her mom while we were staying there. It was like kind of like I felt like Did her you meet that amount? Um, every month, yeah, I did. I gave her the money. I didn't never spend no money on myself. At that time, I knew it was hustle, stack, and grind. So I wasn't going out, partying. I wasn't doing nothing. I was staying there with her. Is like, that if she true? argued with me, I just go in the other room. And Is that, that white... true? He was no. on hustle, stack, and grind? He's always been. He's always had that hustler mentality, yes. But Thank you. if you sit down, sure. you, you're out, you spend $100 to get gas, you spend $300 to go down to buy the merchandise that you now have to flip, come back, drive back. By the time you're out there, you're out there all day, all week, and you bring home $500. Well, subtract the $300 that you just spent going no. to buy the merchandise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Subtract the $100 you just spent driving down no, there to get it. No. It equates... It was not very she much. She's trying to it cut was, them numbers no, down. No, I'm, I'm not trying to cut them down. I'm giving you exactly what it is. I understand what, what she's saying. I understand. I yeah. understand. It was not enough. It's, it's a certain it amount to enough. that. But yeah, that's, that's I, I understand not what you're both saying. I got it. I got it. It wasn't it. enough. I got it. 
Which issue do you think is ruining Anais and Chaz's four-year marriage? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Mr. Bernie, I had asked her in the beginning, well, she told me in the beginning that she she wanted out of this marriage because she felt unsupported on uh, various levels. But I never asked you, how do you feel about this relationship going forward? Are you done too? Th these things that she's bringing up was never issues that she brought up to me at the time. That's where we go back to my part where I say my pet peeve or what I really have an issue with is just the communication. If she would have communicated with me like, I, I just believe you could support me more or whatever. If she's or instrumental... Or I need this or I need that. Yeah, just tell me. You be, yeah. That's the problem I think I have because it's like she'll shut down and right. then it won't talk. So okay. not talking about something don't mean you're going to work mm -hmm. that out. If okay. we could sit down like two adults and just talk about it, I think 90% of her frustration could be taken away. Okay, and I get that and it's a very good point. Do you believe you can get there to work it out, or do you you I say it's a wrap as well? I feel we do have a future. It's just always the bad things or the downsides or the everything that you put the spotlight on. Yeah. Let, let, let me work on your behalf for a moment, okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mrs. Bernie, what do you think... If I could give you one thing from him that would, would allow you to feel comfortable remaining in this union, what would it be? At this point, I don't know. Okay. I don't know if it... I don't know if it's repairable or if I want to repair it because just like, you know, today, all of the issues, they didn't just stem overnight. I didn't just wake up and say, oh, this is, like, I want to downplay, I want to bash my husband. I want, I we've, it's been so many different things. Like, this is my real life. Yeah, I get And he doesn't oh, get it. Oh, I get that. I get that. And I know a number of women who have felt just like you. And I know that sometimes what happens is we fail to make the ask. We feel, and the circumstances are so obvious to us that we believe he should know, and they don't. <laughs> Have you really clearly told him what you need, why you need it, and how you need it without a whole lot of emotional background noise? Yeah, all the time. All the time. And it goes just like this. Chaz, I need you to be, like, more supportive. Oh, well, what am I not doing supportive? Or what about see, you? See, uh, the, the automatic, like, that, conversations? I, I, got, I, I got that, and, and I'm gonna talk to him about it, too, but you can't tell a man, I need you to be more supportive. That's an amorphous idea. That's, that's you... a whole category. What you need to do is truly identify what you need in support of, and you have to identify it for yourself and communicate it specifically. You don't say a word. You have to say to him, Chaz, I need you to do A tomorrow morning, or every morning this week. You know what I mean? You have to be specific with them because that's the way they think. Do you see what I'm saying? I understand. You see what I'm saying? Now, Mr. No, Mr. Bernie. No. Now, Mr. Bernie, when she's being upset and she says something amorphous, you have to say, honey, I know you feel bad. I understand that. You have to hear how she feels. She has to hear all of it because hearing is half the thing. Listening to us is half the battle. And then you ask, what can I do? And then you be specific and then you do it. And that'll get you off dead stop stupid where you're all right now. You with me? What have you got to exactly. say, Mr. Bernie? Because look, this is what I'm finna say. I wanted to get this out, Judge. You've been going on and on, Judge. Give me a it's chance. It's my show. I know. This is my show. <laughs> I do what I want, when I want it, how I want it. And as a matter of fact, That's right. what I want Give right to now him, is to leave. This matter is adjourned. Oh! say what I was gonna say. I don't know if there's hope for our marriage. Right now, I don't know what to think. My wife is very emotional. Sometimes she may feel like I'm not paying attention, but I'm always paying attention. She might feel like I'm taking it as a joke, but I'm not taking it as a joke. It's just a way of me saying that, you know, you should lighten up and not be so tight-cheeked all the time. You know, it's not all about just being always just over the top. It's a game. Everything is a joke to him. He's like, Oh, this, oh, the music. It's, trust me, it's more than that. I didn't just wake up like, oh, I don't trust no more, we can't communicate. You don't just roll over and say, I want a divorce, you know? He don't get it. I'm just, I'm done. <laughs>